I'm here for Sound on Sound at the AES show in New York uh, with Rob Roy from Electronauts with the M97, which is a new very new compressor. Rob Roy, do you want to tell us about it? Yeah, uh, this is a, a, a big monster variable mu compressor. Uh, lots of tubes, lots of transformers, single channel, uh, mono unit. And uh, the idea was basically to, to revisit some of the, uh, the points in history where serious progress was made uh, with the very mu idea. For example, Ryan Narma made the, the variable mu compressor idea really uh, applicable and, and usable for any program material with the Fairchild. Right. Um, and some other designers picked up from there and, and made some, some innovative features. And then there are a lot of spin-offs that aren't particularly innovative but work, work well. I wanted to make something that was uh, you know, innovative and, and really push the technology a little bit further. So I implemented a bunch of uh, features that are somewhat unique in, uh, into this and, uh, and that's, that's it. So do you want to talk us through some of those unique features then? What have you got? Well, for starters, uh, the way that variable mu compression uh, is usually balanced. Uh, you know, the balancing between the push-pull uh, amplifier stage is super important for to get minimal distortion because very mu tubes are actually fairly, they suffer from pretty bad distortion. Um, the way that everybody usually does it is they switch a resistance into one side of the amplifier and throw it out of balance and watch the meter move and then they switch it to the other side and throw it out of balance and watch it move and then they adjust the balance to try to match the error. And that's not a very accurate way to actually balance a push-pull amplifier. It's much better to look at the distortion figure and, uh, and adjust it until you get the minimum distortion. But most studios don't have uh, THD plus N distortion measurement capability. So I built it into the unit. When you, when you uh, put it into this tone and notch mode, uh, a precision sine wave is injected into the input and notched out of the output. And all the residual harmonics and noise is actually displayed on the meter. And, and then you can just adjust the balance pot until you get the minimum noise and, and harmonic. So it's a much more accurate way to do it. And more importantly, it's, it's balancing the unit under audio conditions, unlike DC idle conditions. So it's, a, it's, it's much more accurate and you can achieve a, a much better uh, balance uh, capability at the end. Uh, the meter is actually a Doro meter. So you may be familiar with Doro Electronics in California. Makes excellent meters that show peak and uh, quasi-average. Uh, RMS value. And in a compressor, that's really important. And in a modern uh, digital environment, that's really important. So this is, I approached Doro and said, I love your technology. Can I license it and design my own meter off it? And they said, sure. So uh, this is actually a 40 dB, uh, 1 dB per step accurate uh, uh, Doro meter that shows you the peaks, the peak and the average. So in a compression, that's really in a compressor that's really nice because you can actually see the effects of compression. You can see the dynamic range close in as you increase compression, and also for a digital environment, you can calibrate the meter so that the the highest LED is the clip point of the recorder. So you always know exactly where you are, and uh, yeah, it's quite fun to use actually. That's very cool. So you've also you can also switch it between different modes, can you, on the metering? Yeah, since I was making my own meter, I had the opportunity to implement it however I wanted. So basically. You can monitor the input, uh, the input signal at the XLR. You can monitor the signal after the attenuator. And you can monitor the output signal. So doing things like setting for unity gain is super easy. You just check back and forth. Um, you can also watch the side chain in, in gain reduction mode and, and, and see what's happening. And I even added a, a feature to, uh, to monitor the calibration of the high voltage power supply. So it's a tube regulated power supply, which is very, very stable. but over the years, as tubes uh, tubes age, the absolute value of the voltage can can drift a little bit. So there's a control, there's a trimmer on the back side of the unit that you can adjust to calibrate the power supply. But I didn't want users to have to pull it out of the rack and take the lid off and take a voltage measurement only to find out that it doesn't need to be calibrated. So I made a circuit that converts the high voltage B plus into a signal that can be displayed on the meter and cool. it essentially converts the meter into a voltage meter with a 1% per step accuracy. So you know, uh, I recommend you keep the power supply calibrated within 5%, and this shows you exactly. You can just, every time you turn it on, you can put it into B plus mode and, and see, ah, we're good. You know, we don't, have to, we don't have to do any calibration, so. Cool, so um, it certainly looks very cool. How much is it going to cost, and <laughs> when's it going to be shipping? Uh, it should be shipping in a matter of weeks. Uh, I tried to get it done in, in time for AES, didn't happen. Um, and I have some more expenses that I need to factor in, so cost is not something I can announce just yet. Sure. It, it will be something that uh, 
I'll be posting on my website and uh, within a couple of weeks, so I'll know. It's not going to be cheap, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks it's very a single much. channel. It's got all Lundahl tran uh, transformers throughout. No expense was spared. So it's an expensive unit, but with a, with a 50 uh, microsecond attack time, this thing does things that no other Varimu can do. So I think it, uh, I think it justifies its, its high price. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks very much for watching. All right, thank you.